Thank you, Chairman. Most holy and uh, merciful God, the creator of all humankind uh, throughout the whole universe, <coughs> we continue to thank you for your graciousness over all humankind, for seeing us through the past year of grace 2020, from the beginning of it to the very end of it, and for ushering us to another year of grace 2021. We continue to depend upon your security, your defense, your protection, your providence, your healing power, and uh, your spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation. We continue to ask that you will grant us good governance and good administration and good businesses throughout the whole wide world in this new year this new dispensation. We continue to commit uh, the sittings of the TRRC to you as we begin this new year. We commit all the witnesses that will, that are lined up to come before this commission. And we ask that you shall grant them the boldness to speak the truth. Grant the commission the designing spirit to design between truth and falsehood. And also grant the entire population of this nation and the diaspora, the patience to see through the due process of the proceedings. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, um, uh, Bishop Odeko. Um, before we start our uh, proceedings, getting witnesses, just want to add the voice of um, a TRRC to those um, uh, around the world paying tribute to uh, a stalwart of the UN, the United Nations, and uh, one of them are the founders of uh, United Nations peacekeeping operations, which was um, uh, copied uh, uh, by regional organizations and the sub-regional organizations in establishing uh, peacekeeping operations. The word peacekeeping um, does not appear in the charter, uh, but Sir Brian Urquhart, who died uh, yesterday in New York at the age of 101, was at the heart of uh, uh, the establishment of um, peacekeeping operations in which um, uh, uh, the Gambian summer participated very, very well in all three components of uh, uh, UN peacekeeping operations. The military, where we had our uh, Gambian armed forces and contributing contingents, uh, they performed very well in difficult areas. Uh, the civilian uh, police component as well, we had uh, Gambia police force officers and uh, 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 um, uh, staff participating in uh, CIFPOL operations around the world, as well as um, uh, the third component, which is uh, the civilian component. We had um, uh, several Gambians uh, going around the world participating in uh, uh, in the peacekeeping, peace building operations. <laughs> One of the uh, uh, persons um, who had done that is our own lead council who had um, uh, uh, gone to East Timor to participate in the uh, civilian component of that. Now, to pay tribute um, to Sir Brian Urquhart, I thought um, uh, the easiest and the quickest way of doing that is just read a very brief um, statement issued by the Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez in New York, um, a few hours ago on uh, Sir Brian Urquhart. So if you, with your permission, we will read that brief from a statement. Uh, the SG issued this statement in New York. I'm deeply saddened at the passing of Sir Brian Urquhart, the legendary longtime United Nations official. I offer condolences to his family and to his legions of admirers within 
and beyond the United Nations. So I've ran some imprint on the United Nations was as profound as that of anyone in the organization's some history. As one of um, the organization's earliest employees, he set um, the standard for the international civil service, dedicated and uh, impartial. As an aide um, to Secretary General Doug Hammarskjöld, he helped them um, to define the UN summer scope of action in addressing armed conflict and the other global uh, challenges. And as a close associate of Ralph Bunch, the renowned UN official and the Nobel Peace Prize, Prize winner, Sir Brian helped them to establish and then propel international peacekeeping into wide-ranging use. Across the decades, in service to several of my predecessors, Sir Brian was at the center of formative global events, from the Congo to the Middle East. His involvement in global affairs continued well after the end of his UN career through extensive writings that included definitive biographies of Hamashol and the Bunch. He was um, also a mentor for UN staff and the countless young people as they pursued their careers. Writing in his memoir, A Life in Peace and War, about him at the earliest days of the United Nations, Sir Brian noted that, quote, we were all optimists who believed in the possibility of uh, organizing a peaceful and a just world, end quote. So Brian Urquhart maintained that optimism across his life, shaping the United Nations and the history itself. We are grateful for his brilliant and uh, incomparable contributions as a stalwart servant of, quote, we the peoples, end quote. That's the end of the statement that the SG uh, issued uh, in New York. We will reproduce it here, and they just have it in the room if anybody wants to get a copy of it. He was the quintessential um, international civil servant, as the SG had indicated. He was um, the second person to be recruited by the United Nations in 1945. Uh, you will recall the Charter Conference ended on the 26th of June in uh, San Francisco, uh, 1945, and uh, uh, a, a, an executive commission was established to look at, uh, to see the transition period uh, uh, taken care of. So Brian was working with uh, Sir Gladwin Jeb who was uh, then the executive secretary of the conference. So they made him executive secretary of um, uh, the commission. And the many refer to Sir Gladwin Jeb as possibly the uh, first um, uh, secretary general, interim secretary general, some say acting secretary general uh, of the United Nations. But Brian was at, the, at, his, at his side all the time, uh, working with him, and uh, when uh, the first Secretary General, Trigvili of Norway, was um, appointed. Brian continued working with Trigvili and uh, Ralph Bunch uh, as, as well. Brian's um, uh, background sort of helped him to come to that um, point. He was a, a young soldier involved in the war in Germany, and uh, he uh, was one of those people who liberated one of the German concentration camps. Uh, the Belsen, uh, Bergen-Belsen co concentration camp. That what he had seen there motivated him to find a peaceful way, as, he, as the Secretary General quoted him, of um, settling matters and uh, maintaining justice as well. Uh, we owe him a lot. Our uh, nationals, our compatriots, Gambians who participated in both and in the military sec section of peacekeeping operations, in the 
civilian uh, police component and the civilian um, component. Uh, you guys did very well. We would have to um, uh, thank you. You went out to diff difficult areas um, uh, to serve uh, the United Nations. But Brian is the, <laughs> the, the embodiment of UN peacekeeping. Uh, we hope um, uh, he would rest in, uh, in peace. For a 101-year-old man, he was a good man. We met him. I knew him in New York. And uh, after he had left, that's when I, uh, well, he had left him, actually, but was not really retired. We were bringing him back every now and then to come and talk to uh, the people. I have to tell you one little story. He had, uh, we were handling peacekeeping operations some, uh, in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations. and. Uh, we had created a communications unit called the uh, Situation Center. Brian used to come in from time to time, and uh, one time we invited him to come to what we were calling brown uh, bag lunch, uh, where we get prominent people to come. The staff would take their lunch break, but we would all be in the conference room, and they would, talk, um, they would come and talk to us, share their views and experience about them um, and peacekeeping. So Sabran was scheduled to come, and uh, I was chairing that meeting in DPKO, and uh, went out to meet him at the uh, entrance um, of the UN yard, and uh, we walked him together. And uh, I had seen something in his book on Tamashul, and I told him, Sabran, you're going to have a very different Tamashul um, situation after the lecture. You and I are going to go to the uh, center, the Situation Center, and I show you what improvement we have made on communications um, uh, uh, that we established at the UN. And uh, uh, I told him about an incident in that book that he narrated when Ralph Bunch and uh, Hamashol flew to the Congo, and uh, that's the trip that uh, Hamashol eventually died when the plane crashed in Ndola, uh, present-day Zambia. But when Hamashol left um, uh, for, I think it was Katanga, he had gone to Katanga, he left um, uh, Ralph Bunch in uh, Leopoldville, now Kinshasa. And when he got um, uh, to, but before he left, he had uh, worked out a, a code with um, uh, Ralph um, so they can uh, uh, communicate easily through that code. When uh, uh, Hamashol got to that, to, to, to Katanga, Hamashol um, somehow could not find the code. So Ralph, some, uh, Ralph Bunches, uh, his some message went to him, but he couldn't decode it. He had to, because he had to have the code in front of him. And he, he said, so he remembered, Sir so Brian remembered that incident very well. And I told him, well, what we have in our situation center now is um, uh, 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 the secured lines. And uh, if you had been, if we had had that time, Bunch would have um, spoken to, uh, through the center, he would have spoken to uh, Doug Hamashol in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Katanga. But anyway, he was, um, he, Sir Brian was a very, very uh, uh, able fellow. He's a guy who really uh, cared very much and uh, dedicated his life uh, to the organization. Sorry for this long tribute, but I thought that we pay tribute to our own um, uh, nationals who served in those um, three components that I mentioned, as well as some um, tribute to, um, to Sir Brian. Council, you have any uh, thing to you were in Istimo in that <laughs> civilian component. <laughs> and uh, if you care to share something before we get the witness, well, you can proceed um, after your uh, uh, thank observations. You. And, thank, uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am honored and privileged to have been uh, among those first few Gambians to go on UN peacekeeping and uh, for also um, helping to start to get Gambians going on peacekeeping missions, especially those in the serving forces, the police and the, and the military, and also uh, to a large extent civilians. Uh, but uh, the, uh, what I wanted to say is uh, we have our own Sir Brian Eka uh, in the person of the chairman who's done extensively uh, 
great work to advance uh, the course of the United Nations for the maintenance of international peace and security around the world. Uh, I mean, what he has been told us uh, is that uh, what they have done, really, him and his likes. I used to call him the shadow of Kofi Annan. Wherever you saw Kofi Annan, you see Dr. Sise right there uh, in the thick of things, uh, helping to shape uh, how the world order uh, is, 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 is going to, well, the international peace is going to be maintained around the world. Apart from this little story he's just told you about communications in the UN, or the use of codes as at, uh, at in, the, in the late 1940s or early 1950s. He hasn't told you how it was used uh, in one important mission here. He, he, he went to, in uh, was it in Sweden or somewhere in Europe? I think it was in Geneva. So Dr. Caesar has interesting stories and anecdotes about the United Nations. I think, in fact, you would rank as one of the best historians of actual work in the United Nations. I look forward to the day when Gambia would have uh, some institute where international peace and security would be a core subject, and Dr. Sisi would be one of the key instructors uh, to, for, 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 for our diplomats and students to learn from his experiences as a top diplomat at the, at the UN. He's one of the most dedicated uh, UN uh, personnel I have ever met. He always has the UN charter at his breast pocket. <laughs> He's the only one I know who does that. So that just shows his commitment to, to the ideals of the United Nations. While we thank Sir Brian, we also thank you. And we also hail you as our Sir Brian for all the work you've done for the United Nations. You've raised Gambia's flag, flying in the UN. Thank you for your service. And we also thank, we, <laughs> we also thank our men who, and women who served in peacekeeping missions around the world, uh, dangerous places. I recall when I arrived in East Timor, some of the buildings were still smoldering. You, you still had ashes in some of the buildings. We had to re literally get into the buildings to clear them ourselves in order to find accommodation. So, but these are sacrifices that people have to make to ensure that there is peace and security around the world. It is through this work that today we are enjoying the benefits of having economic in our country, even though some may not like it. Uh, but uh, this is how the system works. Uh, it is important that there be international peace and security for, for, for development. On that note, Mr. Chair, I ask that the witness be brought in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. While um, the witness is being ushered in, uh, was not expecting tribute that might be paid to me. I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, but, uh, but we just honor and hail you. Yeah, you very, Thank you very, very much. Very kind indeed. Um, uh, and that's there. So, well, they are alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. I, Tamsir Jasse. I, Tamsir Jasse. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Jasse. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the TRRC. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, compliments of the season. Same to you. And uh, 
Thank you for agreeing to come to testify before the Commission. Um, today we would wish to talk to you uh, about a few things, uh, that is your biographical information, uh, your encounters with uh, former CDS late Colonel Ndurcham, and uh, how those encounters have led to um, he, him giving you information that an alleged coup d'etat, that a planned coup d'etat had failed, how you eventually uh, went to his assistance, and uh, how you were subsequently arrested uh, with regards to that coup d'etat, the investigations that took place uh, at the NIA premises, your eventual conviction and sentence, and uh, the time you served at Mile 2 prisons, uh, we would also wish to talk about the conditions of the prison, some of the difficulties that were encountered, how you eventually came to be pardoned uh, and uh, released through the intervention of uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and how you left the country. And uh, the Commission may also give you an opportunity to say a few words about your experiences and uh, the uh, the kind of Gambia that you envisage, uh, well, well, we should have drawing mainly from the experiences that you went through uh, du du during this difficult period. Are you ready to talk about them? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, may I just remind you that uh, you are on the oath. Um, it is obviously, you know as much as I do, that it's a criminal offense to lie on the oath in this country. It is also an offense to provide false information to the TRRC. Uh, as a matter of procedure, we do have interpretation in one of the local languages. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you are very fluent in, in, in English language, um, but uh, you just allow us to interpose um, uh, interpretation in, in the world of language this time around and uh, for the benefit of those listening to the testimony at home. So kindly allow for a brief moment for the interpreters to, to take their positions. Thank you. And uh, because we would have interpretation, we should allow for about three seconds okay. uh, between your speech and that of the interpreter. Okay. and obviously between mine and, and the interpreter, so that the speeches would not overlap. Okay. Uh, are we set in the interpretation book? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, once again, welcome, Mr. Jase. Thank you. Mr. Jase, Nula Jalfi, CTRRC. Could you kindly tell us your full names, please? Munga Nyowa Saturi. My name is Tamsir Momodu Jase. Mangi to the Tamsir Momodu Jase. What is your date of birth? August 6, 1957. Mangi to the Yurombeni Fanchuere, August 1957. Where were you born? Fanchuere. Judo. Could you answer now? Banjo. Okay. That's right. And uh, of, uh, you were born Gambian. Obviously, you are a Gambian citizen. Do you hold another citizenship? Yo, what do you mean by Gambia? Finga, the first time I've been here, I'm a Belen Domire. We are Belen Deka. Yes, I'm also a U.S. citizen. Wow, when you do Domire, we America la. Nda, danga am keit bula dof def Domi Belen Deka, and you answered that you are a U.S. citizen. Yes, I'm a U.S. citizen. That's right. So, um, where did you go to school? Um, I went to primary school at Albion School. primary school Albion Primary. Then I went to St. Augustine's High School. Then I, then I went to Georgia State University. And then eventually, Southern New Hampshire University. 
Mafanjogi, Madam Southern New Hampshire University. What qualifications did you attain from these universities, Georgia State and uh, New Southern New Hampshire University? Georgia State, I obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Georgia State, my um, uh, bachelor's degree. BA or BSc? BSc. Yeah. And with a concentration in police administration and operations. And uh, then for your master's? I have a master's degree in terrorism and homeland security. I a master's degree in terrorism and homeland security. Uh, from, uh, from Southern New Hampshire. From University. Southern New Hampshire University. I'm Southern New Hampshire University. Okay, all right, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's bear in mind that there are interpreters. Okay. There, there is this uh, tendency yeah. that you would respond immediately. I have asked my question. But uh, the first uh, and of course, after, aside from these two qualifications, the BSc and your master's, the master's is MA, and right? Yes. No, it's MSc. MSc, all right. Yes. Okay. Okay. MSc in terrorism and, uh, and homeland security. Good. Uh, you also had some postgraduate diplomas, didn't you? I'm not young any I'm definitely going to a postgraduate diploma. Yes, I hold a graduate certificate on public administration and a second one on justice studies. I'm na nyar yo hamne bena belo ajushi nyanga la chumiri ate bena bena kubota munge ajushwa lili ye karanga. Both from the same uh, SNHU, right? Southern New Hampshire University. Nyar ye bulo la bena si bena jange kaibinga kodefe. Yes. Wow. But prior to your uh, move to the United States, you did work in the Gambia, didn't you? Why? Balanga to King Adam de Cabuno, United States, Musna Lige Fisirumi, Gambia. Yes, I did. I briefly, I was a teacher at St. Augustine's Junior Secondary School where I taught English language and history. Wow, Lige Nati did Bugata St. Augustine's High School for Funak, the Mafadon Yangale. St. Augustine's Secondary School. Senior Secondary St. Augustine Senior Secondary School. Junior Secondary Junior. Junior. Yes, where you taught English language and English and history. And right? history. English and history. And then thereafter? I worked for the Gambia Airways at the ground traffic unit. In the international airport. Gambia Airways, and when did you move to the U.S.? In 1984. In 1984, America. And what did you do uh, before you started your education in the U.S.? I served in the United States military, the United States Navy. And uh, U.S. Marine Corps, is it? Or the Navy? What's, what's the difference? Um, the Marines, it's under the United States Navy, but it's a special unit. Okay. So you could be moved, depending on what kind of job you do and the situation, you could be attached to the Marine Corps. Okay. But you are Navy? Yes. All right. And uh, where you did you go through any deployments? Yes. deployment. What? Okay. Ndak ndak walum soldari geji ndak amna chi ligay yo hamne yobu wonen Yes, I was deployed at uh, Operation Desert Storm, the first Gulf War. Saudi Arabia. And you left the U.S. Navy after having served how many years? Ten years. Yes. And you left at what rank? 
ban mahama nga fa joge ko wale se petit officer first class officer first class petit petit officer first class petit yeah. officer first class and uh, and it was after this that you decided to go and do some university education legi da fa non li yebum fi joge ko si nga wax ne ara legi ma dem janga si university bi Actually, I started my education career whilst I was still serving. They have a program in which people who wish to pursue uh, edu further education are allowed to do so. Yeah. And okay. But ultimately, you finished your, you got your qualifications uh, in 1990, was it 1996? Yes. You Le earned your first degree in 1996. That is correct. Wow, okay. And uh, when did you return to the Gambia for the first time to work? Can you July 1st, 1999. July could you just give us a brief background uh, as to how that happened so that we can get the context of what brought you back? Mun nga ñoo wax ra ci gatal comme lolu num xewé won pour nga xamné ñu mun ci xam touti. Yes, in 1994 December my mother passed away. Wow, atum 1994 ci wéru December suma wayjul bu jigen dafa génn adina. And I came home for the funeral. Ma ñew nak ci dëcc bi. And uh, that's when I observed that the Gambia police force could use some help in reforms. So I wrote a reform program and gave it to the then Inspector General of Police. And who, who was that at the time? Kalawan. Kalawan. Proceed, please. And uh, I was then invited to come and try to implement some of those reforms. And, and which year were you called to come and do that? I, uh, that was in 1999, July 1st. Lolo, atum 1999, July. And then what happened after that? Um, I was appointed as police advisor. Uh, who do you would you say was responsible for that decision? Um, my understanding at the time was that the Ministry of Interior wanted it and they had convinced the President Jame to approve it. Uh, essentially, uh, Jame must have either made or endorsed the decision. Yes, because upon my arrival, I was taken to his office by the then Minister of Interior, Mr. Usman Baji. Wow, Dr. Bama Akse, Minister Banga Hamnemo Amewan Karanga Birum Usman Baji, Moma Gunge Yubumacha Office Amba. And uh, in that meeting, President Jame suggested to Mr. Baji that I be appointed Inspector General of Police immediately. And Minister Baji and myself agreed that that would be unwise because I have been away for so long I may not fully understand 
the political terrain, the social settings, and all of the things that would be required to do the job. Minister Baye Agman, I just want to say that when you look at all, when you look at the flag, when you look at the antutor, that the German people who have come to the war, they have come to the war to the war. How did he respond? How did he respond? How did he respond? Um, then he asked the minister to get me the appropriate, that what he felt was the appropriate position in which I could work with the IGP, and that's when we settled for the position of advisor. And after that, you set out to work as advisor, correct? Did you remain in that position for the rest of your service in the police? Dan lulu mahama bo dan fani kon besi jamano binga hamante yange by police ba. No, after the April 10th incident, uh, the then IGP Mr King retired and they did gan na xew xew bobu amone ci April 10th euh ci la IG ba won Mr King dal di baye liggey. And uh, Mr. Sankung Baji, who was his deputy, was appointed Inspector General of Police. Sankung Baji, minga hamne moto ponti koam nyudal de egal egal mahama mna defko Inspector General of Police. And I was appointed Deputy Inspector General of Police. Man nakile njema jil nak top pal machiko Inspector General of Police. And for how long did you serve in that position? Lege nakanga ya gesi mahama bobo no no. As far as I can remember, I was there up to the December of 2000. Lima cuma nak fakir lekudal, ya karena mangga for one February December atum 2000. And why were you? Why did you stop work? Lu tengah bayar lagi bi, walang tengah tahawal lagi bi. Um, during that period, there was I had attended a seminar in which I made made a presentation with the Honourable Khalifa Salah. Jaman abu nak amon na benanda jabo hamne demon na fomagaral phone aikadu mana onaribul halifah sala. And I presented a paper on the role of the security forces in a democracy. Amna kait bo hamne na garal on na kofor di fawone linga hamne mo di tahawai ni ame wali karangegi cuali dohene demokrasi. And I criticize military regimes. Madal di nganya na kenjiti soldar. I remember actually saying that the Gambia army has no place in the state house. Man fatele kuna wahon nani wali soldari Gambia fi amun ben palas the state house. And the audience liked it. Nyanga hamne moi molo mafate wana den kontano chisuma kadugo. But the president didn't. Why not president be mum kontano chivon? So that's from the information I was getting from people who were close working with me and had access to the state house. Manak jamano jojo hebar gima don jot chenyinga hamne nyung don lige ya manwai bete tamir amone njoko akirbur mu state house. I was told to buy el sahel. Chila yi madal di digal nak nyama buy suma hel. Um, the and buy el sahel in this context would mean you have to be careful. I have to be careful, correct. Wow, you need to buy some help, Baba. Proceed. But the what I thought would have been the result of some buy would some help. Manalim fagon ne na kadugo gune some buy some help lolo mo cha fa heko. Is to be fired. Mo ne na den mada ha. That's good. Wow, but I bah. No, that didn't bother me. Manalolo lolo ya haluma one. So I just continued. Manalim continue na rek. On the reform programs, trying to change the mindset and uh, helping the police with human rights training and proper methods of operation. The program being a hamne nang ma continue chile ma don defrek put dimba le police bi chi ay sopali yo hamne nyong kordon def se wali ligay ag linga hamne mo de ag ag yelle fidom adama nenga hamne non len kawara dohale. And I was fired December of 2000. Would you say a few weeks after 
you you made that uh, statement in the conference mon nga wone si ay wiki fani new si jamono bi nga ha ya ngi garal kadu bo se dañ la da o not long after wala ya go to non actually i made that statement in may and i got fired in december, in december. so there was quite but but you believe that uh, at least from the information that you received the firing was as a result of the statements that you made legi dafa noni ci cadeau yi nga xama lolu nga don dajale ñu ti ñun la ko don jox dafa noni lolu lum teki ne mo nekk ne lolu mo taxone cadeau yi nga xama lolu nga garalon bi nga don garal sa cadeau lolu mo waralon ñu daxala Um, I cannot precisely say that's the reason, but actually, when I made that statement, I came into his radar. That's what I. Eh, ni ndumo muna wahne lolo isababu da wai muna wahne. Eba majo he kadri da alchi la kumase na dima ba yehel. What did you do after that? Lenga def bupa lolo. I went. Lenga def bunla da he be pare lolo def ati. I returned to the United States. Dama de lolo wari we America. And did you come back? that de lo singa wat yes um shortly after 911 wow ñu gannaaw bo xamé né xew xew wi amon niñ ko wax 911 i received a phone call from the then british high commissioner dama am telephone bo xamné ki nga xamné moy british high commissioner momako o who offered me an opportunity to work with the security of the high commission here in banjul nga xamne na mo ma doxone ligey ne ma ñew ligey high commissioner bi nek fi banjul amé wa li karange gi my understanding of that job was that after the incident of 911 man nak ni ma yegewon ci wa li ligey bobu ñu ma doon wax moy ganaaw xew xew bobu amon ñu diko wax 911 The British government was upgrading security around its embassies and high commissions around the world. Euh nguri ang Angleterre dañ doon jema yokk nak gëna dëggëral li nga xamné modi karange gi ci seen wali liggéey kay nek ci adina bi yépp. And the strategy was to look for <coughs> local talent in every country. Eh li nga xamné moy sartay ak yoon yi ko doon jëlé moy ñu seer ñi nga xamné ay borom xam xam lañ ci wali liggéey bi té doon doomi réew yi fofa to do the work and let the home office come and uh, review what has been done bu ko defé na ñi nga xamné ñoy wa angleterre yoy nga xamné ñom lañu liggéey ñom ñu ñew sétar li nga xamné mom lañ fa def lan la i did that work ma def liggéey bi they came made the uh, made their review ñu ñew def seen sétlu and gave it a thumbs up ñu dal di woné né contan nañ ci loolu and uh, did you do any other work for the british high commission ndax def nga benen liggey liggey nga benen liggey pour british high commission bi yes the high commissioner asked me to stay on to train his staff the security staff high commissioner bi daf man laaj na ne legi na dess ma muna jangal ñi nga xamne ño fa liggey te amé walli karange gi and he gave me the position of chief security officer mo dal di ma jox ma xam nak ma jité security officer ya fa nek yépp moy karange gi fa nek and in whilst i was doing that job jamono ji ma don def liggéey bobu i got a call from again minister of interior mr usman sonko mr Usman, sorry mr usman badji usman badji mi nga xamné mo yor minister bi amé karange bi rew mi dal di ma o téléphone and uh, said that he had gotten clearance from the president and then nak president bi jox nako yon uh and he wanted to offer me the position of uh director of immigration ne dafa ma bugga jox liggey ma nek director bu immigration because the uh, the the present director then was about to go on retirement mr njay mr njay ma nga xamne mo nekkon director bi mu ngi don waja dem nak pour retire the i turned down the 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 offer man nak nanguma lolu liggey bobu ñu ba doon wara jox because the position of director was chief superintendent ndax te palace director bi moy won chief superintendent was less power less money and less rank te ma xama ba gëna soufé alis ba gëna neew te li nga xamne mo di liggey bi yépp mo gëna fété souf was the initial offer <coughs> the position of director or was it that of deputy director ndax ma ma buñ la buggona jox 
mahamo la bi nga xamanté mom lañ dé oyé directo wala da nga topa ci directo bi the official offer the initial offer. the initial offer officially was deputy director you correct ah ci ngel ben lañ ma doon bugga jox liggéey moy ma top ci director bi and that is the position you said was at the rank of chief superintendent uh, was at the rank of rather superintendent and it was less money less power and uh, less rank ah ya ngi wonne comme mahama bobu nonu nga doon wax ne comme dafa nek mahama bi nga xamantene dole amul amul dole am dole bu ba xales bi bari wut actually i was focusing on the position of director which is what i was going to be in a very short period and lima wax non sax ma ngi doon djublu place director bi nga xamne dina ko doon doon ci lu baña yaga and then the ministry ligey kay ministre bi um decided to upgrade the position ci lañ dal di jël ndogal nak pour dal di ek dolel touti place bi um to the level of uh, at the same a par with the deputy inspector general of police ben mu na tollo ma xama ak ki nga xamne mo top ci inspector general bu police and uh, i then accepted the position bo ci jamano bobu nak ci la dora nango pour jël ligey bi so you became director general of immigration legi si nga ñoo nekk njit fofu nonu ci immigration bu ñuy wa director general that is correct wa nonu la deme and uh, what specific work uh, were you to embark upon or specific projects did you embark upon as director general bi nga nekk won director general ban façon liggey nga warona def wala si nga warona djublu the request that i had from the minister himself was to try to come up with a general reform program for the department minister bi ci bopam nak li nga xamne mom la don sako ci man moy ma ñew ak programme bo xamne da fa indi sopali bu reey bo xamne moy nek ci liggey kay bi so we actually worked together on that i would prepare documents and have his review and input waaw ci la dal di bolo ak mom nak ñu jublu ci wali liggey bobu ma dal di genné keyit bo xamné nak dama ci bind li nga xamné moy sopali ma téral bu ko défé mom tamé mu yokk ci li nga xamné mo di xam xamam and uh, one of the results of our effort was the interior enforcement unit of the immigration department ben na ci li nga xamné faxé ko na ci suñu wali liggey bobu ñu doon def mo ngi aju ci sos bo xamné def nañ ko interior unit bi nga xamné mo nek ci doon liggey kay immigration and what else ak lan um there are other reform efforts that were taken up and uh, in general it was becoming very successful because the immigration department seemed to attract less political attention um wow waaw ci suñu programme yoyu nak amna yu ci bari yo xamne faxé ko na ci amna ay sopalu yu bari yo xamne def nañ ko fa ndax te sax taxon na be liggey kay immigration bi dal di wagni djublu bi nga xamne djublu won nañ ko lol ci wali doxini politique uh no uh that uh, your suggestion was that you are more successful simply because the immigration department was well below the political radar pretty much comme li nga ne ka di wax moy liggey buñ la santone sotina ngir jamono bobu non immigration department yefi politique dugalu su won nonu bu ba that is correct digala and uh, uh, apart from the interior enforcement unit uh, which other projects did you embark upon as director of immigration bu passé uh, interior enforcement unit bi nga xamanté lolu la santa pour nga liggey nga defar ko bu passé lolu ban ban botaay nga liggéeyat ban liggéey nga defal yeah. um so we i worked with the late abdurrahman touré of pristine company liggéey na ak dem ci yalla ci abdurrahman touré eh bu pere bi ñoo wax pristine company to introduce the new id cards that we have now pour nak ñu indi fi id card yu bess yi nga xamné mom lañ yoré ni légui and uh, the idea was to My idea was to convince the ministry man nak lima ci djublu won moy ñu fexé be xamal liggey kay ministre wi to create a new department pour ñu dal di taxawal benen fan bu bessi wali liggey bi that we may call passport and civil registration directorate nga xamné dinañ ko oyé li nga xamné moy saytu wali passeport bi ak bindu yi nga xamné mom lañu bind yi nga xamné ñoo di askan wi 
And the immigration department would become purely an enforcement department. Um, I felt that would make the department, the ministry, more efficient. And cut out as much as possible the handling of cash within the immigration department. Because we, we had had a lot of discrepancies with. with Cash handling. And it was distracting the efforts of enforcement. And uh, you were in that work until when? Until I believe. Um, the first day of Ramadan, 2005, Ramadan uh, I was arrested from my residence. And I was held at the Gami Police Headquarters. And uh, to this day, I haven't received any official reason as to why I was arrested. But the late Bajinka, Major Bajinka, had told me that the reason for my arrest was the introduction of the new ID cards. And because uh, President Jame felt I was interfering with his politics. And because the new ID cards would make it almost impossible for non-Gambians. To access it and use it. To obtain a voter's card and vote. And quite honestly, that was exactly why I wanted it. Because as I was working in law enforcement, I would pick up on official intelligence and information about voter fraud. And my view is if you're going to win elections, it's gotta be fair and square. And uh, what happened after you were released? I decided to stay in the Gambia and uh, engage in some kind of business income making activity. It goes without saying that you lost your job as well in the process. Yes, that's correct. You were not given any information as to why you were arrested. Official information as to why you were arrested. No, I was not. You weren't of death, therefore you are not charged with an offense. No, I was not. How, how were you sacked? The usual two-line letters. Saying what? You are your services have been terminated with immediate effect. And I thank you for your service. With your knowledge of public administration, what are your views about that sacking? It undermines the public trust. It creates strife within the workplace. 
Because if any deputy understands that the moment and my boss could be fired at any moment and I will take over, you only view is to please whoever makes those decisions. You The work will be compromised. And over a long period, there will be a complete breakdown of law and order. But all that is in addition to the illegality or the unlawfulness of the of the process. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, yes, that is correct. I mean, like they say, if your best tool you can use is a hammer, you tend to see everything as a nail. You're looking at it from the legal standpoint. I'm looking at the law enforcement standpoint. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yes, you, uh, it's complimentary. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Good. So you started on, uh, you embarked on a business to make money in Gambia. What did you do? I didn't get money. I opened this restaurant because uh, whilst I was working in government, I noticed there wasn't any place of quality and standard in Banjul. That would encourage senior government officers, business people, and other private individuals. Um, we have, because we had things like uh, meeting rooms and boardrooms so that we would encourage the private sector to come in a nice decent area and hold meetings and have lunch. And uh, it was successful. What was the name of the restaurant? Restaurant Bo Nagalatuda. Banjul Terrace Restaurant. Banjul Terrace Restaurant. Located? Follow Nekon. Um Gloucester it's, the official address is Glo 72 Gloucester, but it's actually on Independence Drive. Why? She tell you Independence Drive before Falanekon. It opened up at Independence Drive, but the official address is at Gloucester, right? Mm -hmm. That for only Independence Drive, nga ko ube why address be Gloucester lawo. That's correct. And uh, you said the business was successful. Who are the main clientele? Ah, uh, nga business be doh na nung wara dohe le nyanyo e kliani won. Um, mainly senior government officials and uh, the many of the APRC um, parliamentarians made it a hangout that they spent a lot of time there. Any notables? Um, I remember people like Jaula. I. It's difficult to come up with the names now, but I know the faces. I can't remember the names. How about Colonel Ndur Cham? How did you come to know him? Colonel Ndur Cham, you are not be able to do My first interactions with the Colonel was um, whilst I was a member of National Security Council. Security Council. We would attend these meetings and that's when I got to know him. Was he a frequent customer at uh, Banjul Terrace's restaurant? restaurant. Yes, um, he was a regular at the restaurant. Wow, mom, that's not far away. You know, the restaurant. And uh, in the course of your interaction, 
with him. Do you recall any particular conversations you had with him regarding the governance of this country? Yes, that is true because uh, as a result of the previous meetings we've had and interactions whilst I was in government. Wow, ndate ndaje yinga hamne agwata yinga hamne mamla dan secha mom bala jamano juju nang mang don lige chingurgi. Um, we felt comfortable talking to one another about those issues. Hona nakbe olu wante wana yinga hamne munda nyo wata nembiru deme nunu. Um, looking back now, I do not know of a moment in which he might have been satisfied with the manner in which things were going. And uh, in the, one of our conversations, that was prior to him being the CDS, I told in which he casually said maybe it's time to change jame um, the conversation led to me asking a few questions trying to understand where he was coming from um, the Proceed. Yes, and because I have a problem with um, overthrowing a government. But I also understand the God-given right of protecting oneself, even if it is against the government. Uh, Proceed, please. So um, we continued the discussion, and I got to understand that his major concern. Was not the corruption, the incompetencies, and all those other things. <coughs> but rather the killings that he knew about. Killings by who? Ray. Can can modern Ray? In my understanding of him, that were ordered by President Jame. And he felt he would be a victim. Um, I asked him if there was any particular reason for him to think he would be a victim. He said, no, it's just the way things are. You, when you become a victim, it will be overnight. Um, I didn't take him seriously, but he continued the conversation each time he comes to the restaurant. And I begin to understand that he meant what he was saying. Did you have any other conversations regarding planning and uh, uh, personnel involved? Ndayo, musinga wata na mom tamit. Nexi peke yinga hamante lula mo teral akindit nyinga hamante nyosi waraboka. Of course, I asked him if he, what kind of support he was, he would, he had within the military. Wow, la yon na ko mom. Ban fasongi japale la am chibir soldar gi fufu. He assured me that yes, he had people that were on his side that he had spoken to that would join him. Wow. I decided that information should be on a need to know basis. And 
I don't need to know, there was no need for me to know who was involved. So I, I, I asked him not to tell me. Because this is the protect, for the protection of those that are involved. And, uh, but I wanted to know two things. First, I wanted to know who would replace Jame should they succeed. I also wanted to know whether Lang Tombong Tamba was involved. Uh, the reason uh, I asked this was, first of all, he, um, Lang Tombong Tamba was his deputy. If he was involved, the chances of success will increase. If he wasn't, Maybe not so. I wanted to know who would replace Jame. Because I told him if you bring in something worse than Jame, the Gambian people will not forgive you. So he, he told me that one Aliu Job, one Aliu Job was identified. I did not know Ali Job. I couldn't place him. I asked for some kind of a background on him. And when he gave me the background of Mr. Job, I objected. And number one, he's too young. He is inexperienced. And, uh, okay, and uh, someone that young being given the opportunity to be a transitional president is not likely to walk away from the office. He's going to want to stay. So that's an issue that we have to put under consideration. And uh, to the question of Lang Tombong Tamba, he told me Lang Tombong Tamba was not involved, was not aware of any of the plans. At what stage was this? This was about Three to four months after the, our initial discussion, after I began to realize that he was serious. Did you have a conversation with him about this particular subject of who was involved subsequently? Ndahiyo, what mom? Si mbir bi nga xamantene lolu ngay wax ni comme ki nga xamantene mom boka na ci li ngeen lim bugo na def non um i like i said i told him not to tell me who was involved comme ni mako waxe won rek dama ko wax ne dal jarut muy ma wax sax ñana ñana ci boka um for the protection of those individuals ñu rek ñu mëna aar ñooñu so if there was any changes as to the status of Lang Tombong or any other person for that matter you would not have known i would not have known no <coughs> so as at the eve of the coup d'etat, si. you do not know who was involved except that you were told at some stage that Ali Job was earmarked for the position to replace Jame. Si ngon bi nga xamantene ne mënu ni ci élection mo wara nek ak coup d'etat bi. Ndax yow mu jé nga xam ki nga xamantene mo wara nek ak jid bi ndax tamit ndax lang tombon tamba bokon na ci. No 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 that's not my question. Uh, Sorry, let me put it in Wallaf. Dipi binga wahek mom, nyeti wer chagana, bibis bibala kudeta bi hew, yo hamulo kan mochi bokak, kuchi bokut, ludud nerek wahon nan lane, alu job dal lanta non ne, munna a mom la nyu jel purmuri purmuram palase jam. Yes, that is correct, because the our first the initial discussion we had about this matter 
up to the day that it, he attempted it was one year six months. Walo landa te digante binye kawata ne mbirmi. Be bes binga hamne momle don buga def kuditabi. Dem na bechidiri at agjuron berniwer. Thank you very much. Uh, with regards to who was to replace Jame, apart from your suggestion that, uh, that um, Ali Job might have been too young and inexperienced for that position, uh, did you have any further discussions with him as to who would have been an appropriate personality? The jar jar am sure would know no damn it. The Lulmota Dumona Neka in Gitli. The continuing a waha mom, King Hamanter, Yo King Haman Fogan and Munajil Palas Bob, while a Muna Dono Jame Bujogi. Yes, I suggested to Colonel Cham. Wow, Halatalona, Colonel Cham. That should they, should they succeed? Ne, Bufeke and Kudeta be Ninko Buge, Amen and Nunu. I think it would be wise to approach. Um, the late Bishop Talewa Johnson. Because of his credentials. Integrity. And the less likelihood that he will be interested in becoming a president. He wouldn't have the He's from the minority, a minority tribe. He's from a minority religion. It will be difficult for him to create a political base to stay, should he want to. He had been the head of the IEC and understands elections. And I believe he would have the integrity to conduct a transitional period. I, I also suggested to him that he should not, under any circumstances, uh, ban the APRC or any political party or associate the APRC with what Jame, the administration, does. Because having been in government, I could clearly see the separation between what the administration was doing and what members of the political party of APRC were doing. And he agreed to that. As an aside, uh, did, did, you, did you consider the position of the Green Boys? Um, the, I understand about the Green Boys um, when I was within the police. Because I conducted uh, recruitment that I had based entirely on U.S. standards with the support of the then IGP that had specific qualifications and a process and right in the process of the recruitment there was a truck that came with a, a truckload of people. They asked for me, one of them asked for me and gave me a letter. The letter was from um, Dr. Tal, who was then some big wig in the APRC. Asking me to recruit these individuals. Um, none of them had my minimum qualifications. So I just 
took the letter non la jele letter bi and minuted on it ma daldi ci binda there dr tal ne dr tal yo if you want me to recruit these people so buge ma jel ñi liggey Please respect me enough to send me people that meet my qualifications. Ngam wara fonka na fonka go tollu ni ding ma ebalal ay nit ño xamne lima soxla ci ñom dinañ ko wara am. To my surprise, man nak lima ci gëna betta sax moy. No one ever talked to me about that issue. Amul ken ko xamne waxna man lu aju ci mbir mi. For the investigation, yenen gess yi nga xamne def na ko ci. Reveal to me. Feñal na ne. That these were the green boys. Ñi ñoy green boys moy xali goori daan sol ay yere yu wertay. I do not consider them man nak jappewu ma lon ne as part of the government bokka nañ ci ngour gi we all matter ñun ñep nak am nañ solo but in my opinion green boys did not matter why man ci suma gis gis ñom green boys yoy dal ñom amuñ ci solo it was more of a political movement ñom dafa melni mbotaay la bo xamne dañ ko taxawal ci wali doxini politique which i have no problem with man nak lol sax awma ci won jafé jafé but when it comes to professional policing way na bu ajo nak ci police yo xamne dañ wara def sen liggey niñ ko wara defé we have to separate the politics from the profession bon nak dañ wara tégé mbiri politique bon on that note mr chair i request that we have our first break and we return at a point you may appoint thank you Thank you. We will um, take a tea break and then come back at uh, 12:15. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. 12:15, Mr. Chair. Yes. 12. Sorry. Noon. Yeah. Uh, 12:10. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Meeting is adjourned.